Snow, slide-offs, and now school closures. Much of the Inland Northwest is covered in snow tonight. We'll have complete coverage. After some heavy snow in parts of the Inland Northwest today, we'll get a little bit of a break on Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures slowly creeping up, but tracking our next storm system on the way for Thursday. There are a lot of fans that have contacted me recently. I oh, know you're going to try again this year. So yeah, we'll make our best effort. Plus the 42nd annual pig out in the park, Spokane's biggest food event. What are the plans this year? We'll let you know tonight. And the Hub Sports Center in Liberty Lake is about to do something they haven't been able to in nearly a year, hold volleyball games. We'll hear from them tonight. Several inches of snow all across the inland northwest. It's impacting several local school districts now. Pullman Public Schools will have all remote learning tomorrow. Moses Lake School District, St. John Endicott, Moscow Charter Schools, and La Crosse Schools also have remote learning tomorrow. Garfield Palouse schools will have a two hour delay and buses will use only paved roads. No preschool, no breakfast and no zero hour classes will be offered. A Soton Anatone school district will also be on a two hour delay for more school closures. Just head to our website, crem.com. It was a quick decision, either keep going and hit everybody or try to escape and get off the highway. And as I tried getting off the highway, I jackknife and hit the exit. And that's what slowed me down and stopped me. The weather conditions throughout the day led to several crashes all across Spokane County, including the driver of this semi truck you just heard from right there. He said there were several crashes ahead of him and he had to choose between hitting a sign or causing a pileup. And due to those multiple crashes throughout the day and extreme avalanche danger, Snoqualmie Pass is closed between North Bend and near Ellensburg, Washington. The Department of Transportation will be evaluating conditions tomorrow at 8 a.m. to determine a safe reopening time. Plus, take a look at this picture from the Department of Transportation. They said their crews cleared more than a foot of snow, responded to collisions all day, and were doing avalanche control work. Since Friday, the pass received close to 30 inches of snow with more expected tonight. And good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Regina on. Welcome to Creme 2 News at 10. I'm Mark Hanrahan. City crew is working 24 seven right now until all streets in Spokane are cleared. If you are wondering when snow plows are coming to your area during the Spokane full city plow, you can track their progress live. So here's a map of the snow removal progress right now. The green means complete. Purple means working or being monitored and red means next. So you can interact with this map right now by going to myspokanecity.org. Scroll down on the home page a little, then click on snow info. You can even click on an entire neighborhood to see, and this map is only activated during full city plows. You can also go to cdaid.org slash snow for a similar map of Coeur d'Alene's plow schedule. Well, the questions now is more snow heading our way and what will conditions look like when we wake up tomorrow? So Michelle Boss joining us live from home tonight. So Michelle, can we expect some more snow overnight? All right, well, the main event is over in the Spokane area, but we still could see a few snow showers tomorrow. I want to talk about the few remaining winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings that are still in effect, and that would include the Cascades. Of course, still heavy snow expected at Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass through the day on Tuesday. We still have winter weather advisories that encompass parts of southeastern Washington and the central panhandle of Idaho, but in Spokane, we could see a few snow showers tomorrow. Any accumulations would be less than an inch, and I'm thinking it's closer to less than half an inch in the Spokane area, so you can probably put your shovels away if you took care of it today. Uh, we'll get a little bit of a break through the day tomorrow and on Wednesday, but tracking uh, potentially additional snow later on in the week. Right now, satellite and radar showing quiet conditions in the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area, but we've seen some breaks in the clouds. As you can see, the snow pretty much coming to an end, at least for now. Additional snowfall expected to move into far southeastern Washington and the central panhandle overnight and tomorrow. But because of kind of that break in the clouds, we've seen some areas of fog develop with visibilities at the Spokane airport down to five miles and lower visibilities down uh, towards Pullman. Two mile visibility, not too bad elsewhere, but chilly, chilly temperatures. We are having a hard time really uh, getting out of this Arctic air mass. Temperatures right now still in the teens in the Spokane area. Don't expect it to drop too much as we expect more clouds to roll in overnight. 20 in Coeur d'Alene, but it's down to 10 in Sandpoint and it's 13 degrees right now in Deer Park. Next 12 hours, uh, temperatures may actually come up just a couple of degrees as we see some thicker clouds move in, but generally quiet weather here in the Spokane area. Just a few snow showers tomorrow with the high trying to get up to 30. It's going to be a struggle. We're going to try to get up to uh, above freezing by Wednesday with a dry day, mostly cloudy skies, and then a chance of snow moving in late in the day on Thursday. High temperatures in the mid-30s. 
So basically tonight, don't go outside if you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, Michelle, thank you. Even with the cold conditions, some people got out to enjoy a little bit of the snow. Take a look at these adorable pictures from Andrew Conway of their dogs <laughs> playing in the snow. So cute. You can send us your photos using the Near Me section of the Krem2 mobile app. And make sure to watch Up With Krem starting at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, bright and early. We'll break down the latest on driving conditions for your commute to work. And if you'd like the latest about weather conditions in your area, just text the word snow to 509-448-2000 and we'll send a link directly to your phone. Turning to sports now, Washington State and Washington men's basketball faced off in the Apple Cup tonight. Karthik Ben Katraman tells us how a wild finish with clutch moments decided the game. Both the Cougs and Huskies came into this one without their best players. Isaac Bonton out for WSU with ankle injuries. Quade Green out for UW. The Huskies came out in this game and threw the first punch in the first half, though. The Cougs were careless, turning the ball over. Marcus Sahonis was cooking for Washington. He started in place for Green today, and he led the Huskies to a 10-point lead at halftime. WSU would end up tying this game up, though. Defense played a big part. Block shots like this one from F.A. Abogidi, and then they were forcing missed shots as well. And then Andrev Yakamoski hit this three ball to tie it up at 43. This game came down to the wire, though. Cougs down two. Noah Williams going to bring the ball up the court here, glides into the lane, and he's going to score a layup with 10 seconds to go. The Huskies go straight up. No timeout. Sohonis, ice in his veins. He's going to hit the floater right here to put Washington back up two. Cougs, one last chance with the heave. Williams from about half court, too strong, no good. Washington holds off the Cougs to snap a three-game losing streak in this series, 65-63. Sohonis finished with a career-high 29 points. Proud of our guys with that back second half and had an opportunity there to get that thing to overtime. Noah made a big layup um, and uh, just wasn't meant to be. It was Kyle Smith's first loss to UW as WCU's head coach. Washington State will host California next on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in Beasley Coliseum. Back to you all. Karthik, thank you very much. And with Eastern Washington officially back in phase two of the state's reopening plan, gyms are cracking open their doors again. This after being closed nearly three full months after the latest shutdown. That's right, and the new reopening guidelines allows fitness centers to function with a limited capacity. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones explains what that means for local sports. Not too long ago, this gym felt more like a ghost town rather than a center for all things sports. The hub is known for hosting local tournaments and games. Throughout phase one, they were unable to provide their normal resources. It wasn't until last week when gyms in Spokane and surrounding areas learned they could reopen with limited capacity. So when phase two was announced on Thursday, our, our phone started ringing off the hook, emails, text messages. Under new protocols, the hub is allowed to have 200 people in their building, which is only 7% of what they can normally hold. Modern and low risk sports like volleyball can begin hosting games this weekend. Basketball and other sports deemed high risk are now allowed to practice as a team, but it's still unclear on when their games can resume. They've been in perpetual training mode since we could start back up in June of last year. So from June of last year, all they've been able to do is train until we had to shut down again in November. One of the major changes that's now in place is the use of masks. Players are now wearing them during their time inside of the building. This weekend will be some of the first competitions held in Washington since March of last year. Talking to parents and coaches and kids, the, they so craved and wanted the ability to, to play. Phase two is the first positive the Hub Sports Center has been able to celebrate in quite some time. It's not exactly where they want to be long term, but nonetheless, it's a step in the right direction. While they welcome more athletes back, they remain optimistic for those moments when even more games can return. Super excited to have, have noise and activity back in the building, uh, to see these, these players behind us get to, uh, get to hit the ball around and, and be in a team environment. From Liberty Lake, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. Well, get ready. Spokane's largest food event is coming back. Event organizers announced today that Pig Out in the Park will return for 2021. So last year the event was canceled due to the pandemic, but this year it's back with new coronavirus measures in place. Now, the 
event will be held at the pavilion and organizers say they're hoping for the event to be September 1st through the 6th. It's at the pavilion this year in order to make sure there's enough proper social distancing and enough open air space. Unfortunately, though, there won't be a beer garden and there will be less tents out, but people will be able to walk around with their drinks. Now, some pluses there will be six nights of free music. So yes, will it be will it be the same event? Yeah, from the standpoint of that it's open free, we want families to come down, we want everybody to come down and have a big time and and have some good food. But it's all there's also a, a different sense of not control, but a different sense of uh, caretaking. I love the name, by the way, Pig Out in the Park. Huh. Well, Burke says if you are a musician, by the by the way, or a food vendor and you'd like to participate, just give them a call, that number right there on your screen, or send them a quick email. And Mark, I was going to ask you, have you been to one of these? I've never been to a Pig Out in the Park. I need to get to one because wow. I like to Apparently, you know, eat food. Pig Out. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, good stuff. Glad they're coming back. Yeah. All right, still ahead, the Spokane Arena offering more coronavirus vaccine appointments to tomorrow. What you need to know before they open. And then later, high school football practices began around the region today. We check in with local teams to see how their first practices in the month are shaping up.